Welcome to our annual meeting. I'm Liz Bergeron, and for the last uh, 13 and a half years, I've been serving as executive director and CEO of this uh, wonderful organization. And the purpose of our annual meeting is to report on our accomplishments for 2014. We do operate on a calendar year. Uh, it's also to certify our board member elections. But most important, uh, from my view, is to let all of you know, all of our supporters, our members, our partners, our donors, our volunteers, uh, to let you know how your support is being used to make a difference for the Pacific Crest Trail, and to let you know how your contribution of uh, time and talent is having an impact on the future of the trail for for all of us and for future generations as well. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it's great to have you here. <clears throat> so in addition to uh, all of the above that I've mentioned, I know that um, we have a number of people who are new today, maybe here for the first time. Maybe you're not yet a member or a volunteer. Well, I'm going to tell you that there's a lot of people in this room ready and willing to talk to you and <laughs> share the excitement and the enthusiasm for uh, the PCT or the Pacific Crest Trail. So we're going to start right off with our financial results from 2014. And they look something like this. So we have two columns, and this, is, this would be equivalent to a profit and loss statement. And on the left side, we show the results without the value of volunteer labor. This is, you could also say it's per our audited financial statements. On the right side, we show the results with the value of our volunteer labor, which is really the better picture because most of the work that we get done for the Pacific Crest Trail is because of our incredible volunteer program. So this shows the value of that, um, of that incredible contribution. Now, 2014 was a fantastic year, yet this shows a deficit at the bottom of the statement, or we, it looks like we spent more than we took in. And I think the easiest way to address this is that this is nonprofit accounting, and uh, it can be rather tricky at times. I can tell you that we actually did better than we had planned, better than projected. And um, the reason is that we were able to use some of the surplus from prior years that was approved by the board to implement our strategic plan. But the actual results in terms of money in in that calendar, money out, um, looks something like this. But I also want to share with you uh, where these revenue sources came from, and then in the next slide I'll show you how the money was actually spent. I think the important thing on this slide here is the ratio of uh, government funding to private funding. So that light blue part of the uh, pie chart on the left-hand side, 37%, that is the amount of our revenue or the percentage of our revenue that comes from federal sources. So we do receive funding from the US Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management. On the Everything else on the right-hand side, or the remainder of it, is the amount of our uh, private revenue, which amounts to a total of 63%. And most people are surprised when I tell them that the majority of that 63% comes from individuals. So 41% of our budget is from people like you who care enough about the PCT to, uh, to share your resources with us and uh, share your resources to protect, preserve, and promote the Pacific Crest Trail. So we think this is a, a fairly healthy ratio, 63% private, 37% uh, federal funding, and we talk often about this ratio and how important it is that we don't become overly dependent on any one source of funding. And that's what's uh, you know, helped us build a financially stable organization. So this is how that uh, money is spent. Again, left-hand side without the volunteer hours, right-hand side with the volunteer hours. 
So most of the work that we do as staff of Pacific Crest Trail Association is to support our volunteer program, our trail information and education program. So you need to add together the, uh, the blue and the right on the, the right-hand side, to, which will show that 81% uh, of our funding goes into our trail programs and 19% is for supporting services. And uh, again, per the audited financial statements, we refer to this as our functional allocation of expenses. Now, a couple of really exciting things that happened last year that are not reflected in any of the slides that you've seen are uh, two extraordinary gifts that were given by individual donors. Uh, the first one came in last summer. A donor gave us a call and said, I would like to make a gift to help us implement our strategic plan by paying for a full-time land protection director. Now, that funding will show up in this year's financial statements when we spend that money. Um, Shortly after that, we received notification from a second donor. They were really excited about this news. I had shared it with them in one of our private conversations. Um, and they've been longtime supporters. They, too, have been very, very excited about protecting the PCT in this way. And so they also notified us of a, a very significant gift. And that's what these two gifts look like. So the first one was for 200000 and the second one is for 250000 And I am happy to say that we have hired Megan Wargo as our full-time land protection director. And she's here today. I'd just like Megan to stand. She's right back there. And I, I just think it's, you know, just one of the many things that, uh, that really proves the passion that exists by, uh, by people like you for the incredible work that we do. So you're going to hear a lot today about our accomplishments in 2014, and I am just thrilled that you are all here. And there will also be time at the end for questions, and then um, there will be time at the uh, open house that follows this as well. So we've got a, uh, a many presenters, and it is my, uh, my pleasure to turn the podium over to Barney Mann, our, the chair of our board of directors. My name is Barney Mann, and I have the honor to serve as board chair of the Pacific Crest Trail Association. I'm from San Diego, and my first duty today is to certify the election. Uh, many of you here voted, and I'm pleased to announce, I need my little clicker right there, right? That uh, all three members were elected, and uh, one is not here. There we go. Other direction, thank you. And the results are Ann Ewald, who's not here today, and then two members who are of the briefly stand, Jim Newman and Don Rouse. Gentlemen, will you stand? Don Rouse. And Jim Newman is hiding in the far back. And, one of the reasons I'm board chair is because I get to work with some really neat people. Uh, I've enjoyed the company of many of you uh, in very volunteer efforts, but I've enjoyed the company of our staff. But there's a dozen plus, a uh, baker's dozen folks, our board, it is such a pleasure to work, to work alongside them. Folks of a wide variety of skill sets, wide variety of resources, everyone pulling together at the oars. I really love that when it's win-win. And we have passionate people. These are folks who travel four times a, uh, four times a year on their own nickel to attend a, a board meeting weekend. And we spend all day Saturday, usually in nice weather, indoors. In the, uh, and the two meals that, it, uh, uh, that we don't pay for, one is Saturday lunch so we can keep it short and do more work. <laughs> and then Sunday morning, so we get up early for breakfast because you know, uh, hikers always will come for food. <laughs> and they get on with the board meeting. So I'd like all the PCDA board members to stand, please. They should be interspersed amongst you. Yeah, there we go. You never know who's, who you're sitting next to. This is the last time that I'll be wearing this shirt. Uh, 
for three years, I've really, for three years, I've had the honor um, and the real privilege of serving as your board chair. And I wanted to tell you why, why I am. I am because in 2007, on the occasion of my 30th wedding anniversary, our 30th wedding anniversary, don't tell her I said mine, <laughs> I followed a wonderful woman 2,650 miles. And it, just as I was leaving California, uh, I'm a little slow sometimes, it occurred to me, I'm walking, in a I'm walking a line that's almost all in wilderness through the most populous state of the country, in an Oregon and Washington, and it's the 21st century. This is a modern miracle, and I need to come back and do something and help it out, and I have a decent skill set. So I'd already appeared on a, a Liz Bergeron's radar screen. <laughs> I came back, raised my hand, got to work, and I've been on board for seven years. I'm on I'm board chair because of all of you. All of you who are members, all of you who are volunteers. When I go back to Washington, D.C., and I sit in a staff member's office, a member of Congress, they are bored. It's the eighth meeting of the day. And I tell them, we have 273 members in your district. Their eyes start to open. It makes a difference, every person's member. And I'm board chair because the PCTA really works. I've, been, uh, uh, I've had leadership roles in a number of, of uh, volunteer organizations, and it's usually been in the past. If I was leading an activity, I always had to be prepared to step in, that uh, um, a, a ball would be dropped, and not intentionally, but it would be dropped. I've never had that once in the PCTA. And I'm board chair, and I'm going to do something a little bit different here. Uh, I'm board chair. Uh, because of the uh, PCTA's professional leadership. I was reading a book recently about uh, the Sierra Club, in particular about David Brower, who um, you may agree or disagree with his politics, but he took that sleepy club of 4,000 in over 17 years, increased its mem membership to 40,000, and made it a power and a force. Uh, I'm board chair because I got to work with someone of that strength and like. I've been to, I've been to um, trail fests and annual meetings, and I've never heard someone publicly laud Liz Bergeron. And it's one of my final acts, I wanted to do that today. So in uh, fall of uh, 2001, we had three employees and a budget of under 300,000. And today, as you saw, we're not just north of two million, we're about two and a half million. We have 18 full-time people PCTA. Uh, two weeks ago, I got up uh, at O'Dark 100, maybe 4.30, flew up to Portland, and for a very important PCTA meeting, I'm a volunteer. You know, I, I just want to. And our salaried leader was doing the same, getting home who knows what dark, dark hour that night. And she does this on a weekly, monthly basis. So I wanted to thank Liz Yu, your family, for sharing <laughs> you with us. I've had a really great ride at this, so thank you. And we have one more. So um, PCTA board members uh, uh, were elected for three-year terms. And uh, should we be so lucky, we term out. We have to leave after nine years. And we have one of those today. Uh, that, Liz, if you'll come up and join me. And uh, I went backwards again. Let's go forwards. Yeah. And uh, Christy Corzine, would you join us? Christy has served on the board for nine years. She has been involved in all three of the uh, PCTA strategic plans. She has headed a two committee chairs. You get to stand in the center here. This is your moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, oftentimes, when uh, something's troubling me or I want someone to be a sounding board, I turn to Christy. And I know Liz does the same. Uh, it's just been such an asset having you for all this time. I could go on for a while. But uh, there's a woman in the back you might see occasionally holding up fingers, and I'm getting close. Uh, this morning, we had a chance to really in front of the board to laud you. She left us a, uh, a words of wisdom, and they're really very dear, uh, 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 which we will keep in mind. But Liz, I think you have something for her. I do. And do you want to say a word or two? <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> One minute. Go for it. OK. Um, well, I guess I would just say that. Um, yeah, pull that close. It's um, with um, 
great sadness, actually, that I get kicked off the board. Um, <laughs> for that. It's been um, wonderful, as very mentioned, um, serving on the board and very rewarding. And um, Barry asked me for these words of wisdom from my nine years on the board, but I have to say, all the wisdom I've accumulated has really come from this woman right here. <laughs> and the rest of the staff, especially Angie and Mike and Teresa. So thank you. It's uh, one of the most wonderful and rewarding parts of my job to get to work with uh, people like you, Christy, and, um, and Barney as well, and all of the other board members, volunteers, et cetera. Uh, it's been uh, such a pleasure to have Christy served on our board for nine years. Um, I think we were friends prior to that, and we kind of twisted her arm and talked her into it and had some help. And so um, I've gotten to know you quite well over the years, and so we decided instead of the framed thing that we have given out in the past that um, we were going to take a little bit different route, and I know that you really like consumables as gifts. So there's some consumables in here, um, but there's also some mementos of uh, your service because I know how much being a part of this organization means to you and how important it is to uh, take care of the Pacific Crest Trail. And with that, uh, I turn the podium over to uh, John Crawford, who is, um, he's taking my place, and it gives me a, I do so with a smile, because I know the PCTA is going to be in really, really good hands. John. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, all of us on the board are, are really sad to see your era as board chair, but not your era as a participant and a board member in, in the PCTA come to a conclusion. Uh, Barney has been incredibly committed. He's led by very hard work, uh, which is the best way to lead, being willing to do it yourself first. Uh, he's, as he mentioned, he's taken us through the uh, strategic plan, which is a document very important to us that we really live by, uh, developed a, a new set of bylaws, which our governance is, is in excellent condition. We've uh, had a, a new process for assuring that our evaluation and performance rewards for the executive staff are well done and they're, super, they're superbly done. It's easy to do because they're such a great staff. But, and he even, with me, developed a process for transition of chair so that there isn't some kind of slump or learning period while the new guy comes on. At least I, I hope there isn't very much of, of one. But as you saw from, from his comments and his affection for the board, Barney does lead with the heart, and he's definitely done that uh, with us. It, it, we're a very cohesive group through the efforts of Barney and Liz, and this is so important in organizations like this where we're volunteers, and we commit and work out of our own devotion to the cause. And our board meetings are fun, uh, we're friends, we hike together, uh, we work together to make this organization work. And that makes us much better stewards and very good stewards of the money and the resources, your volunteer time and all that you entrust to us. But so much of that comes from Barney's leadership and we're deeply, deeply grateful for the, the time that you've done. And I think we have something for Barney as well, if Liz will come up. I don't think this is. always like consumables. And these, by the by the way, these are available, I think, or are no, going to be available. This one is not. <laughs> Push the there it is. Hold it in. Actually, I don't need a microphone. I can just use this one. Um, so, Barney, with much appreciation, we have a special gift for you. It is not a framed plaque, but it is not a consumable either. However, it is... <laughs> Love it. 
Thank you very much. So, so these are uh, blankets that are, have been developed through a new partnership with Woolrich, and they have done one for the Pacific Crest Trail, Continental Divide Trail, and, um, oh yeah, the Appalachian. <laughs> Have you heard of them? <laughs> uh, next up is Angie Williamson, our development director. And I did it. Hello, I'm Angie Williamson, and I'm the development director for PCTA, which means I get to lead all of our fundraising efforts. And you already heard from Liz about our uh, great results last year in our fundraising program and about our wonderful land protection gifts already. Um, some of the highlights, though, from 2014 is that we did raise over $1.5 million in private support last year, which is the largest amount we've raised yet. So we're really, truly growing in our efforts, and it's, it's wonderful to see uh, what we can do as a group. Uh, that it was an increase of 59% over the contributions that we did in 2013. And a part of that success did come from that we had these uh, new fundraising opportunities through the wild uh, movie publicity, and that was a big part of what we did in fundraising last year. I don't feel like I'm speaking very loud. Okay. Um, and we did also uh, launch a new program last year, was that we formalized our Legacy Society, and that is uh, our cl uh, recognition club for people who have, have uh, notified PCTA that they've included us in their estate plans. So if you saw the last issue of the communicator, we've uh, listed those names, and we want to thank all of those who are in the room today uh, for thinking of the future of the trail as you make your uh, planned gifts. Okay, membership. Yay! <laughs> so we did end the year with 9,800 members, and we have members in all 50 states, the District of Columbia, and we're now up to 27 foreign countries. That number, I think, was around 21 for quite a few years, and uh, but the, the growing interest of the trail nationally we're seeing in new memberships as well as uh, where the hikers and other people are coming to visit from the trail. Thank you. <laughs> and so we increased membership by 19% last year. Um, we um, uh, get our new members through our website, through mail, long distance permit forms, the PCTA store, the wild microsite, volunteer applications, gift memberships, workplace giving campaigns, and also word of mouth. And so we hope that all of you will encourage your friends and family to become members as well. So wild, it was, was a wild year. <laughs> uh, in 2014, we did get hundreds of new members because of their passion of the, for the trail that they learned of, uh, whether they read the book or they watched the movie. The movie didn't come out until uh, December, so late last year, and we're continuing to see an increase in our membership from people who saw the movie early this year and also are just now getting a chance to see the movie through the, uh, through the uh, Blu-ray and DVD, which were just released last year, last week. <laughs> and the, uh, the DVD does include a PSA telling people to support the Pacific Crest Trail Association uh, with uh, Cheryl Strayed giving that message. So we're really excited about that. <laughs> Liz will be talking a bit more about our wild fundraising efforts later. Okay, and then corporate and foundation fundraising. We also had quite a significant increase in our corporate foundations. Uh, the corporate partners increased um, partly because of the interest in the wild marketing campaign, but we raised 350% more than the prior year, and we have ended the year with 38 partnerships. Two are right are on the screen, and as you see, there's the beautiful blanket that Barney just got, and then also we have a new partner, Point Six, and we have uh, new new socks celebrating the trail as well. Okay, and then finally, I'd like to share a story with you. 
Uh, Linda Morris was a member of the Pacific Crest Trail Association. She was passionate about the trail and backpacking, and her backpack was always packed and ready for her next adventure. She was working on section hiking the entire trail with members of her family. Unfortunately, a tragic car accident prevented Linda from completing her dream. Her family and friends wanted the joyful memories of Linda's passion for the Pacific Crest Trail to live on, and they have established the Linda Morris Fund of the PCT Endowment. In this way, Linda's spirit of adventure has inspired funding needed to protect the trail for now and in the future. And we are so honored that her family has chosen the Pacific Crest Trail Association with her legacy. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mike Dawson. I'm the director of trail operations for PCTA. Oh, there we go. Oh, how did that happen? <laughs> okay, sorry. We're just going to let this run right through. Sorry about that. And uh, the two areas of, of PCTA's work that I'm uh, uh, responsible for are uh, our uh, volunteer work on the trail, our trail, uh, trail work program, and also trail protection, which is what I'm going to start with. So um, every year there are dozens and dozens of proposals and lots of planning on the, on the uh, part of our agency partners who are working, uh, who uh, manage the land that the trail runs over. And uh, this is kind of a, a brief list of the kind of things that we deal with and, and have dealt with this year as far as uh, issues on the trail. And, um, uh, one of the things that, that I want to keep in mind is that uh, many of these issues would be really simplified and the trail managed in a much more consistent way uh, with better overall management direction uh, for our agency partners. And uh, we all know that the trail is a lot more than just the physical footpath. Uh, it's the landscapes that the footpath takes us through that really make the PCT what it is. And um, we have uh, achieved this with BLM a few years ago. And, um, and this year, um, uh, we really made uh, enormous progress with the US Forest Service. Um, they uh, have produced new national level direction for forest planning. And uh, for all national scenic trails uh, within the national forest. And that direction requires that a body of land around the trail be identified to protect the trail experience and that direction uh, be developed that will uh, protect those things that make the PCT and other national scenic trails so special. And um, so uh, after years of effort, uh, I also want to point out that we were very successful this year, uh, along with our agency partners, in convincing Congress to fund uh, uh, land acquisition on the trail by the federal agencies. Uh, $2.5 million for the US Forest Service, $1.5 million for the BLM, uh, for PCT acquisition in uh, federal fiscal year 15, the year that we're in right now. And um, uh, also, we have already been in DC uh, um, supporting funding for fiscal year 16 and, uh, and fiscal year, uh, the, the fiscal year to come. And so last month, uh, as a result of those efforts, 51 members of Congress, 51 representatives, signed on to a letter. Uh, 31 of them were from states, the three states that the PCT traverses, um, signed a letter to their colleagues uh, pressing for land acquisition funding for the next year. 
And I, I want to point out that uh, a big part of that, and a big thank you from me and from the association, goes to the volunteers and staff who travel to DC, uh, you know, where when we could really, uh, you know, be, be uh, much happier out on the trail somewhere uh, to do this work of contacting uh, agency offices, contacting members of the House, members of the Senate, to tell the story about the PCT. And so thank you very much, guys. Um, so uh, youth crews, uh, many of you know that we have a pretty uh, robust program to bring on the next generation of uh, volunteers on the PCT. Uh, this year, in 2014, 21% of the PCTA's 77,000 hours of uh, volunteer work on the trail was accomplished through uh, youth crews, uh, whether they're core crews. Um, uh, Chris Baker has uh, uh, joined us today from American Conservation Associ uh, Experience. The, the, uh, uh, our primary core crew partner is is here represented today, and everything uh, and, and a variety of other programs, uh, including Bar Environmental Charter High School in the LA area that has a, a robust volunteer program. So uh, this gets gets into you know exactly what have we been doing this year? You know, we don't have the great relationships that we, w we have with our agency partners without spending time with them. So 528 different meetings with our agency partners. Uh, this is a, is a big number for us. 1,700 miles of the PCT received some sort of maintenance this year. Uh, 46 miles reconstructed. 1,600 volunteers out on the trail. So this gives you a, a, a brief list of our volunteer hours uh, and volunteer hours beyond trail maintenance. We, we keep trying to bring in more volunteers who are interested in things uh, in, in addition to physically working on the trail. So here are some of our, our primary groups, uh, PCTA-based organizations doing work uh, on the trail this year. And uh, we've had some big changes this year in that we are uh, pressing more and more of our attention towards steward programs, programs in which individuals adopt small sections of the trail, uh, go out on them, see what's going on with them, and, and move forward to, uh, to uh, uh, do, do work before it becomes a huge problem. All right, training. Uh, our volunteers have to be effective and they have to be safe. And so this is a big, uh, big uh, um, focus of ours. So partnerships, we have uh, several groups that we work with, volunteer-based groups that are not part of PCTA. Uh, High Sierra Volunteer Trail Crew, 1,500 hours this year. Pacific Northwest Trail Association, uh, 1,200 hours this year, and the Washington Trails Association, 5,300 hours this year. So, and with that, I'd like to introduce our, uh, the PCT uh, manager from the U.S. Forest Service, my friend, Beth Boyce. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm so glad to see you. It's good to see many friends here today. Um, this is the favorite part of my presentation is the thank you, because it is the most important thing and the most important message that I can give you is your service, whether it be uh, swinging a Pulaski or whether it be answering a phone or going to those 528 meet meetings, 528 meetings, it's all important. It's all to protecting the PCT for perpetuity. And so there's, not, there's no way to understate that importance. So thank you. Um, I really, really, really um, think that our generation 
will make the difference on what the trail looks like in the coming years. So your efforts and your interests are well served at this time. It's, a, it's an important time. So I want to show you a picture of one of our volunteer groups that may be the most happy this year. So these kids and their principal, and you recognize Barney and Sandy Mann as well, were in D.C. hiking the hill. They are from the Environmental Charter School in Los Angeles. So you've got a mix of um, sophomore through seniors, I think, in the, on the left-hand side. And they made presentations to our congressional leaders as well as our agency leaders um, that really opened hearts and minds to the importance of the trail. And when you hear a 17-year-old talking about why the PCT is important to them, you know you're doing good work because you're creating citizen stewards. Um, PCTA and the Environmental Charter High School did something extra effort this year in terms of getting them to DC. And so one of the students um, had never even flown in an airplane before. So doors that we open are much broader than you might ever imagine. So Leslie's already given me time, so I better move. This is Lucas Donald. He, is a, he did his senior project on the PCT, and his dad is a district ranger on the Plumas National Forest. Trail Skills College. How much effort does it take to put on something that that many people attend and learn basic trail skills? And we have that up and down the trail, not just in the um, Columbia Gorge, which is where that one was hosted. Thanks to PCTA staff, um, I welcome having such a professional group to work with. I really, really appreciate it. And I don't have a photo of the board, but you need to know that your service is just really greatly appreciated. So a couple more things. Don Tui's not here, I think, today, but he always asks me, what's up with Tahone Ranch? <laughs> so we're going to start with that instead of waiting for the question. <laughs> so what's up is on January 6th, we recorded a conservation <laughs> easement for... So what that means is that we have 100,000 acres of land protected, the view shed protected for the trail to go through. The total conservation easement was 240,000. So what a great first step in getting the trail to Tahone. Next step is the trail easement, and we're working on that this year. Oh, there's a couple things going on called forest planning. Um, Mike talked about it um, a little bit, and I hinted towards it in terms of we're at the right time to influence the future. Um, these forests are the Sierra, Sequoia, and Inyo, and what we're looking at is how to protect the nature and purposes of the PCT. Um, these, the, these plans live for about 15 to 20 years, but really, the changes that we're looking at and thinking about will extend well beyond that time period. So please stay engaged with that. Um, it, it's made some press, a little bit of issues surfacing, and there's good dialogue about, well, what should we be doing to protect the trail? Um, we're in our fourth year of drought. Had a big fire season on the Klamath last year. Burned about 183,000 acres, including um, two bridges on Grider Creek and pieces of two more. And so I've shared with some of my buddies that uh, we found money to get the Grider Creek bridges replaced this year, which is really monumental. Um, I think the total project's about 400,000 just to get those bridges back in place. Certainly um, the drought, 6% of the snowpack, uh, we expect to see will continue to challenge us in terms of the fire season coming up. And finally, I'm just going to talk about increased use a little bit. These are the permit numbers from 13 and 14. We know that 15 will increase as well. Um, certainly, um, there are other places through hiking permits, or, or in, the, in this case, over 500 mile permits, um, are a small sector of our total use, right? So the day user going by foot under permit is, is not reflected in these numbers. So we, this is our smallest group of users, but it's growing. So we know that overall use is growing as well. 
Um, this is what the John Muir, Muir Trail, which overlaps the PCT for over about 200 miles, that's what that use is kind of trending towards. So dealing with that use is going to be an important thing. We celebrate the fact that more people are getting out. That's a good thing. We just need to figure out how to make sure that they have a minimum impact on the land. And so we've hired a couple of new folks this year to help us with this. And this is Greg and Jules. And Zach's in the middle, but we only have two crest runners. They're um, based on the Cleveland National Forest and will be um, visiting with people for 12 weeks, monitoring the PCT from the Mexican border to um, Warner Springs, which is about 110 miles. And they'll be teaching leave no trace practices and doing our best to um, get an understanding of what the increased use looks like. So with that, I'll introduce Mark Conley, who is my colleague with the BLM. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Conley. I'm with the Bureau of Land Management at our California State Office in Sacramento, and I'm the National Scenic and Historic Trails Program Manager, and I'm always delighted to come here. I was just, as I was driving down, this afternoon, I was thinking just how long I've been involved with the PCT. It goes back many years, and I walked in with Bob Baluis in the office in the uh, one of those many meetings. Uh, but anyways, Bob was you know the executive director I worked with when the PCTA was very small, and then had the privilege to work with Liz since she started as executive director. And I've just watched how the PCTA has evolved and grown. It's just amazing every year, just all the accomplishments that I hear from the hard work of a very dedicated team. And now the number is correct. Did I hear 17 full-time employees? 18, my apologies. But anyway, it's amazing. When we, we first started, there was two, Bob Ballou and Joe Sabanowski were the two uh, team members with the PCTA. So I really commend you for all your hard work that you've done to, to uh, grow the organization. A couple of things I just wanted to touch on real quickly. Um, you probably heard a little bit about all the accomplishments and all the many, what, 528 meetings. And I know we've been involved in many of those. But I, I particularly want to talk about the PCTA agreement with the BLM. This year, we, you know, we've been providing $60,000 to the PCTA. And almost every other organization was cut because of our budget cutbacks. But because of the work of the PCTA, Liz and the team, and the work they do with um, especially youth core teams and kids from underserved communities, we were able to maintain that level of funding. And it was really the results of the Liz and coming over and meeting with our state director and the reason that happened. So I really appreciate taking time from many other things, but also one of those many meetings that we had to have to uh, continue. Another agreement that I really would like to highlight is our interagency agreement with the Forest Service. We provide funds to the Forest Service for uh, youth corps teams, and then we work together and we're more strategic on you know, contracting with our youth corps teams. Prior to last year, the BLM did its own contracting, the Forest Service did its own contract. It was very complex and difficult, so we, we brought it together. And it's just much more seamless when we're managing the trail as a unit. And Chris Baker was recognized that he's the executive director of the American Conservation Experience. And we have uh, Chris in the audience, and he's done a great job in prodding both the BLM and the Forest Service to get this done, as well as the PCA, PCTA volunteers. So I appreciate that. Another agreement. It's a little bit contentious that I th thought I'd at least mention is we're going to submit a grant to the Off-Highway Motor Vehicle Recreation Division of California State Parks. And there's a lot of motorized use in Kern County affecting the trail, and we're submitting a restoration grant, but we're getting a lot of pushback on doing that. And so I just, um, again, appreciate your support as we try to move forward with restoration of that difficult Tehachapi area in Kern County. <clears throat> And lastly, uh, land acquisition. I, we've been talking about land acquisition since I've been with the, PC, you know, with the BLM. And we're finally now acquiring land through the Land and Water Conservation Fund Act. Mike mentioned the funds that are available. 
Um, Megan is here in the audience, just hired by the PCTA, doing a fabulous job, very experienced and skilled in doing that. And uh, I really appreciate that is a long-term protection where the trail is crossing private lands. We're able to acquire these lands and protect the trail and the trail corridor. So very important work that's being done, a lot of it behind the scenes. Uh, we've also acquired some funding first time, you know, for a wind energy project in Tehachapi again. It was affecting the visual qualities of the PCT and we uh, demanded through mitigation funds that we provide these funds uh, for land acquisition. And it's the first time that's ever happened for recreational purposes. So again, a precedent has been set. <clears throat> Just a couple other quick things I'd like to mention before I get the hook here. Uh, you know, we have a big desert renewable energy conservation plan. We just, the public comment period is closed and we've got thousands of comments. So we're trying to sort through those with the help of a consultant, but uh, obviously the Pacific Crest Trail and the trail corridor is being affected and we're trying to make sure the trail is protected through these massive, you know, mostly in the California desert, but again, we're looking at that to make sure the trail was protected for the purposes and values and the reason it was designated. And the other last issue I'd just like to mention briefly is the support the PCTA has provided to the BLM with our youth summits. We've had, this will be now the third annual youth summits. We've had them for the last, you know, since, um, well, three years ago was their first. And I've just really been delighted that PCTA has been involved in all of those, and we're really working to engage kids from underserved communities. And so it's been a very successful endeavor. We're still moving forward, and it's a high priority for our BLM, and we're working hard to kind of diversify our workforce, and we really appreciate that support. So lastly, again, I can't thank the PCTA and the, everyone here, the volunteers. I get paid to being here, but most of you are not being paid. So I thank you and commend you for doing that and the support you provide to the BLM and the Pacific Crest Trail. Thank you. Hello, hello. So at Pacific Crest Trail Association, our volunteers and our partners are so important to our work. And every year we honor some of those who made significant contributions over the past year with awards. Uh, and we do like to do these locally as much as possible. And so we do have one award uh, that we wanna give out this year uh, at, this, at this meeting today. Lauren Cole Norton came to us through Catch a Fire, which is a program that matches volunteers with nonprofits who can use their specific skills. She was the creative force behind our wild microsite design. She was first interested in working with us because she was inspired by the book Wild. During most of the design phase, she was on vacation in Europe, but that didn't stop her from working on this project. <laughs> Before leaving on her trip, she found a hiking club who was headed out on the PCT. She went out on a hike with them, and it may have been her first hike on the Pacific Crest Trail, and she used them as a focus group to hone in on what our message should be for that target market. And she got a fantastic photo that was used in the design of the homepage. She used her design skills and her outside perspective to really help us to connect our design and our target market she worked on the design while traveling in Europe, and she called in to our marketing meetings to present the design. When she returned from her trip, she worked with our team to finalize the design. And then we ended up with a fantastic microsite because of her skills and dedication to our project. The Labor of Love Award recognizes individuals for their work on a particular project that benefits our organization. We'd like to present this award to Lauren today. Lauren, can you please come up here? <laughs> and 
And I'd like to just lead, read uh, her award real quick here. The 2014 Labor of Love Award presented to Lauren Cole Norton in appreciation of your extraordinary dedication to the creation of the Pacific Crest Trail Association's wild microsite. Your outstanding design work and target marketing efforts showcase the Pacific Crest National Scenic Trail while connecting those inspired by wild to the PCTA's mission to protect, preserve, and promote the trail. Your work has made a difference by effectively communicating the PCT experience to the world around us. Thank you. So I thought I would uh, put Lauren's work up on the screen while we were talking about it. For those of you who haven't visited our website uh, recently, this is the beautiful work that Lauren did. And so thank you, Lauren. It's uh, really, really been wonderful to, to work with you and to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So speaking of wild, um, Angie mentioned that I'd be talking a little bit more about it. 2014 was definitely a wild year. And like most things we do, it was not without controversy. Uh, we certainly had people who didn't, who thought that we should not be involved at all with this uh, movie, and mostly because of the adult content of the movie. But the reality is, this, is gonna, this was going to happen, this would have happened with or without us, and we really saw it as a wonderful <laughs> opportunity to get our message out there. And our objective was to uh, reach a whole new audience, people who either loved the book or loved the movie, and to convert them into supporters. You know, to first tell them about the work we're doing for the Pacific Crest Trail and convert them into supporters. And I am so glad that uh, we got volunteers involved because uh, this, our whole marketing effort, we recruited a volunteer. And um, the first thing she asked us was, you know, will your website be able to handle the traffic? And so that was, that was one of the first things that we took a look at. And that was really how we approached this, is we, we put our, um, a lot of our resources into adding and enhancing our website. We figured when people see the movie, hear about the movie, they're going to want to know more about the trail, and they're going to go online, and it's, they're going to be immediately directed to our website. So that's where we uh, really put a lot of our, our time and effort. Um, as I mentioned, uh, Michelle Karchman led this marketing effort. She's a volunteer. And we worked very closely with Fox Searchlight as a result of a connection that one of our donors made for us. And um, I've got a couple of photos to share with you here from this. But you know, we 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 really took this very seriously, and we heard a lot of um, we heard a lot from folks that they were concerned there was going to be inexperienced hikers out there and. That was going to, you know, just turn out to be a terrible thing. Well, we need people to know about the PCT and love the PCT. So we launched a national education campaign to provide better information about how to use the trail, especially if you're a first time hiker, how to do it safely, and how to leave no trace. So um, last count, we, ha we had something like 85 media spots as a result of this campaign, national coverage, regional coverage, local coverage, and um, it's still continuing. And it will continue uh, for many, many months to come. And uh, we're, we're excited about the increased awareness. So we did also convince Fox Searchlight to give us 50 tickets for the Hollywood premiere. Um, the way that I did this is we learned after working with them that uh, they likely weren't going to be writing a large check. So I said, you know, you're likely not going to be writing this large check. Why don't you give us 50 tickets so we can thank and acknowledge the people who are and the people who are putting so much hard work into the work that we do. I had to do this over the telephone, and uh, there was a long silence after, after I said that. Um, and they said, well, we'll see what we can do. Rumor had it we were going to get five tickets. 
Um, and, and they came back with 50 tickets. So we, uh, you know, we took board members and staff and volunteers and donors and, and we had a lot of fun. So here are two of the characters that we invited. Uh, person on the left is Roger Carpenter, one of our longtime supporters, PCT hiker, and he actually met Cheryl on the trail, and he is the character Greg in the book and in the movie. Um, on the right is Ed Faubert, also known to most as Meadow Ed. Um, he also met Cheryl on the trail at Kennedy Meadows, and he was also in the movie. So it was a lot of fun to have Roger and Ed join us. And one of my favorite things was we were driving down Wilshire Boulevard, and we saw this sign. This was on Wilshire Boulevard, right out in front of the theater. Yes, it was approved by the Forest Service um, that they could use this sign. But here was the specific Crest Trail sign. It was, it was uh, very fun. And so the, uh, the red carpet was actually a tan carpet. Um, because they wanted it to look like the trail. <laughs> so I talked a little bit about the microsite. Uh, really, it was about reaching a new audience and providing good information. And I'm really glad that Michelle asked us that question about whether our website could handle the increased traffic, because the top line shows our uh, website activity in 2014. And the bottom line shows our website activity in 2013. And as you can see, we had an increase throughout the year with that big spike at the end of the year when the movie was released. And um, our usage has, our website visits have continued to stay at a very high level because of the, uh, the increased awareness. And we think that's fantastic. How am I doing on time, Leslie? OK. so. Speaking of our website, I encourage you all to visit it and visit it often if you haven't. Um, what I've got here, this is not live, but this is a, uh, a snapshot of our blog. So those four pictures across the bottom, those are different articles that you'll find on our blog. And we are continually adding articles with some really great information. So. If you haven't looked at our website recently, uh, please check it out because there's, it's just a very, very important source for information about the work that we're doing, about the work that our volunteers are doing, and about what's happening out on the trail. Another important part of our outreach and our online success is uh, Facebook. And as uh, you can see from this slide, we've had a significant increase in our Facebook likes, which means that we've had an increase in our reach as an organization. So we ended the year with about 67,000, and uh, just last week we were up to 82,000. So um, really a great indication of uh, what's happening out there in terms of the interest in the Pacific Crest Trail and in our work. So really, the, the last order of business is to acknowledge a wonderful group of people, and that is the Pacific Crest Trail Association staff. Uh, Beth already showed this. Oh, what happened? To, oh, there we go. Uh, Beth already showed this picture once, but this is actually taken at a, our recent staff retreat. We did a day hike and um, took this picture while we were in, while we were enjoying the outdoors. So. Um, those of our staff who are here, if you could please stand so that we could acknowledge uh, your hard work. <laughs> you know, as I like to tell people, really the job of the staff is to make sure that our volunteers have the resources that they need to do their job. And um, that's in addition to all of the other work that we're doing. But it's a, a wonderful group to be a part of. And I've never worked with more hardworking, dedicated, and passionate people. So thank you. All right. Well, that concludes the formal part of our presentation.